See the red? Yeah. It's Doesn't it look like it's supposed up. to be something? It looks bad? like it's telling us a no-no. Yeah. I bet by the time we try to format it, it was telling us a no-no the whole time. Shit, dude, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that to me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> partner you're listening to the first episode of just a bit gaming here in 2019 i'm your host ryan chumpy crash reynolds and this is your other host adrian bertazoid townsend screw your resolutions (laughs) you're still a damn loser hey Hey, that's not nice i was between that or new year same old bullshit i like that one better (laughs) i like that one better that one's more geared towards us and not so much the listening audience. That's true. That's true. We'll go with that one. Yeah, okay. We'll go with that one. <laughs> so, uh, I haven't seen you since last year. Yeah, man. Uh, good... Are we going to play this joke? <laughs> yeah, I was about to ask, is that a good joke or you just want to bail on that? It's, it's, uh, you want to bail on it, don't you? Well, sure. Yeah. You're nodding your head. Honestly, very small and rapidly. But <laughs> I know you're ready to just pass on that joke. It's honestly like I heard it so much on social media. It's like, okay, <laughs> See you next year. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's done. And actually, nobody said that at work when we our last day of the year. And then right at the very last minute, somebody had to throw it in. I was like, <laughs> damn it. We almost got through the day. <laughs> you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but way to close out 2018 border wall. <laughs> <laughs> it has been it has been a few weeks, though, so. I'm excited to talk about some games, man. Yeah, dude. Mm. Lots of games. Before we talk about some games, though, I just watched a video today. It was a life hack video on YouTube. And I know you're familiar with these. You have to be. I'm hella familiar with them. So I watched probably the worst life hack video I have ever seen. It was like 28 life hacks to improve your life or something dumb and generic like 28 that. life hacks to hack your life. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it starts off with with a few that are you know that I've seen before. Like, uh, gosh, I don't remember. One was a makeup thing where you put a little pin inside the brush makeup brush and it makes it fan out like a hair pin thing. OK. And it's supposed to make it easier to apply your makeup instead of just buying a brush instead of a fun, buying way. a fan brush. Exactly. Right. OK. So then the next one was this woman laying on her bed. She has her phone above her and she's reading her phone and she drops it on her face. And they said, oh, Idiot. get some um, hot glue. So they took some hot glue and hot glued the back of her damn iPhone and it stuck a door handle knob or doorknob for a cabinet on the on that uh, made a pop socket basically with a door handle and hot glue right and instead I was of like, buying a damn pop socket exactly and I was like pop, pop sockets are, are cheap wouldn't you just rather buy a damn pop socket it made no sense to me whatsoever no no sense and uh, plus how long is that hot, hot glue really gonna last yeah like is it gonna all on top of that is that gonna mess up anything on the inside when you're applying that hot glue to your plastic yeah also best of luck shoving that shit in your pocket yeah <laughs> <laughs> good point. Way to be, Nobby. It was so dumb. I didn't even think about that. That's a really yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah. You want to talk about suspicious looks on the train. Yeah. Well, yeah. maybe maybe it's geared towards uh, women. Somebody with a hole in, in their, their pocket. Purse. Oh, sorry. Yeah, probably. <laughs> maybe that. Well, the ah, it was so bad. It was so bad. But the, the worst part about it was like, I guess they're assuming that you can use these objects that you have at home instead of going out and buying a $3 damn pop socket. I don't have any doorknobs or hot glue for that matter sitting around at home. I'd have to go buy that stuff. And that would end up being more expensive than buying a damn pop socket. Yeah. It was dumb. Or you have to pull the knob off of one of your cabinets and then you have to make a whole other life hack video of how to open a fucking cabinet without a knob. Dude, it gets better. It gets better. No, it does not. It gets better. Okay. So there was another one on there where they took plastic wrap and wrapped a plate with it, put their food on the plate, ate it, and then what do you know? You can take the plastic right off, throw it in the trash, you have a clean plate. I do you one better. (laughs) 
<laughs> that was so bad, though. Give me, <laughs> all right, if you can do better. You take tin foil, right? And you pull it out to where it makes effectively the same dimension of like a square. Right. right? And then whenever you rip it, you just use that as the plate. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's not so much different than like being at your grandma's house and ordering pizza and she gives you a napkin instead of a plate. Or or I've had plates where they wrapped the, uh, what do you call it, aluminum foil over like cardboard or something. Yeah. I've had plates like that before. Right. Where it's just a piece of cardboard that they put foil around. Yeah. Yeah. But that exactly. was just to give you a plate because maybe they didn't have a plate. This made no sense to me. First of all, you are. What were they eating on the plate with? It was like wrap? it was like some oatmeal looking crap. It didn't not look good. Some, whatever it was. Some grits. Yeah, probably. I mean, it was it was some like gruel. So you just you just wasted some plastic, first of all. Um, and your food didn't look good it, on top of that. And are you that lazy that you can't rinse the oatmeal shit off your plate when you're done with it? Also. I just I want to play devil's advocate here for a second, man. I would like to hear it. All right. (laughs) So actually not even devil's advocate. I think this is a relatively supportive stance to take. If you are so lazy. Yeah. That you would rather wrap your plate in plastic than rinse them or wash them or even just wipe them down. If if you're if you're that lazy or even that pressed for time, Mm -hmm. just roll with it. Just put your plate in the sink with the plastic and wrap walk on away. It? No, no, no. Just don't use the plastic wrap. Just have a dirty plate and put it in your sink and live out loud. Uh, well, I mean, you know, what just, is that? What pro- that's not solving the problem. You still have a dirty plate. Yeah, but your saran wrap plate doesn't solve the problem of you being a lazy dick. <laughs> it's supposed to be like. Right. So <laughs> just just fucking just roll with it. Just stop hiding who you are. Live your best life. Live out loud, friend. And then keep on using that dirty plate the next time you need to use it. Or, hell, if you're, if you're that, if you can't rinse off your plate, paper plates or styrofoam plates or whatever are not that expensive. I mean, you're, you're, you're creating more trash that we don't need, but whatever. You're already creating trash by using saran wrap or plastic wrap. Right. Man, dude, it was. And plastic wrap isn't even recyclable. No. So actually. You're you're making a bigger problem. Here's you're another compounding thing. the problem. So welcome to killing Mother Earth. Yeah. Life hacks. Here's another thing. Fan brush. You bullshit. can also like cut through that plastic wrap pretty easily with even a spoon. I think that may be the point. Why? Because okay, you take a plate, you stretch it with plastic wrap. Yeah. Put your food on top, but the I think if you look closely, I I, I think that they stretched it tight like a very shallow drum. It, it was real loose. It was loose. Yeah. That's stupid. So, <laughs> if if you do it tight, you can sl- put a l- pop a little slit in there. You're like you're eating eating your grits or uh, your mush or whatever it was they were having. Mm-hmm. Uh, your 1890s uh, London orphan food. That's what it was. And you you sit back and you go, oh please sir, may I have some less because I am. <laughs> s- s- I started at famished and ended at full zero to a hundred. Yeah, real Drake style shit here. And so then you realize how full you are and you pop a little slit and you push all your food in through that slit and then a little bit of scotch tape on top and now you have Tupperware. (laughs) But if they did it it loose, they can just reach around the bottom of the plate and pull all the saran wrap up around their food and (laughs) spin it. (laughs) Spin it like you would uh, a tiny little bit of fruit, like 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 spin it till it pops. No, 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 no. Spin. No, well, you don't want to pop it. That's wasteful. I know, We're trying but- to create leftovers now. You spin <laughs> it like you would like three mandarins in a grocery sack. Yeah. Or uh, a very generously sized packet of weed. Yeah. And then you save your little uh, leftover sachet. Yeah. And now because of the makeup of your little baggie of leftovers, whenever you're ready to go, you pop a hole in it. Once again, I'm on the popping of holes and you Squeeze extrude it. it like one would decorate a cupcake. Yeah. So, um, yeah, dude, do you uh, you got it? I mean, so I, I guess this that's, is why it's a life. Hack. If you're if you're devil's advocate, but they didn't do that, though. If they would have gone that far, maybe. maybe well, it's because of that. the popularity of the Black Mirror Bandersnatch Choose Your Own Adventure. 
Mm-hmm. They wanted to leave it open ended because 2019 oh, okay. is the year of Choose making your decisions adventure. for yourself. I, I get that. I get. 2019's got a lot of hope in it, <laughs> but because everyone dude, bailed on their resolutions already. Going back to their original point, though, like I, I, I don't understand what purpose that serves, and also. The cutting through it. I mean, you would cut through and get food on your plate anyway. It would be easy to cut it. Wait, were they using a knife with their mush? No, they were using a spoon. But I'm a saying, spoon? like, even a, even a spoon, if you scrape it just right, you might rip just the tiniest little hole that gets that mush right down and dirties your plate. And you're screwed. I get that. You're screwed. Can I ask it you a quick a... question about spoons? Okay. Like a metal spoon. Yeah. Even a fork, I guess. I can't bend them with my mind. Uh, next. All right, moving on. <laughs> Now, the question is, have you ever had just the right size spoon compared to the shape of your upper jaw that or fork that when you took a bite of something, it like clicked itself into your upper teeth and you just had a booger of a time getting it back out? Yes. Like, that's kind of freaky when that like yes. you have that small it's panic attack. It's a little bit attack. scary. Yeah, yeah. You're like, now everyone's going to call me a fucking spoon mouth. <laughs> yeah. And I have to live like, like like I have like I'm a unicorn with braces almost. Yeah. Like. So that you talking yeah, about like yeah, yeah. when you're eating like ice cream or something, you flip it upside down. So and, it, and it really it pops in there. Yeah. And, and then, then like, oh, you have shit. that moment where you think about how am I going to navigate the rest of my <laughs> life with this on my face? How am I going to get this out like, without pulling the, my teeth this out? This is obviously forever moment. Yeah. You yeah. know. So, yes. And I have done that. I've done that on multiple occasions. And uh, usually what I do to, to get that little thing out is just run it. straight into a wall. Yes. And then it goes, it pu- actually, no, not running into a wall, but if you push the spoon back a little bit further where it gets out of the, outside that tooth, those two teeth that are locking it in place, yeah. then you can get it out. Just be careful not to push it too far. You don't want to like cut off your airways or spoon. anything. Yeah. Yeah. Or just twist it. If you can twist it, that usually does it too. Yeah. But yes, I, <laughs> I've done it more times than I'd like to admit. How many times would you like to admit if that was your benchmark? You know, I, I, I haven't kept track of it. So like if you <laughs> had done call it, me out here. Well, man. no, is it one of those things like if you had done it three times, you'd be like, yeah, dude, I fucking done it three, three times. times. But four is more than I'd care to admit. So I can't remember. Where, where's your time. where's your line in the sand there? My my spectrum. Um, I don't know. More than five. More than five. More less than five. Than five. More than five, less than five, less than ten. I don't know, honestly. <laughs> Equal then, or oh, it, it's okay. Equal to <laughs> or remember. lesser than? I don't remember. Equal ten. to or less than ten. All right, that's a good, yeah, good way to put it. But moving on, there was there was one other one that I wanted to. Uh, one other roll time. Off of you. They, oh, well, one of other one other life, life hack, hack, and it wasn't it wasn't as bad as these other two. Actually, there was a good one on there, too, I would like to talk about. Um, Quick sidetrack. Is, was the good one, don't buy beer anymore and wait for your friends to brew it and give it to you? I know we oh, usually man. save what are you drinking for the end of the show, but I'm going to be done with Dude, this by then. <laughs> I've been drinking it. Like, I don't know if you can't see us on the YouTube. We put it in wine glasses because it's so fucking tasty. I've been drinking the hell out of this. Yeah. Already out. Like, this I is, left enough for you, but. Did you? Yes. This is some good stuff. You arguably left enough for me. Let's see. Oh, I thought there was more in there than that. Sorry, man. It's not it's not the right bottle. Uh, the bottle does match it, though. Our friends that the last time we reviewed beer, we had an Oktoberfest uh, from an as yet unnamed local group of guys who's trying to they're trying to get moving on some brewing and we had their Oktoberfest it was their first batch and they made this this time it's a watermelon wheat so shout out to Zachary Doyle Troy Anderson and last time we didn't shout out the third guy who's involved in this Adam Deloney uh sorry Adam Whenever he came in to eat and I was like, yeah, I talked on the podcast about Zach and Troy's beer. He was like, oh, that's cool. I was fucking there helping. So (laughs) thanks, guys, for not involving Adam. Sorry to spread the salt here. Anyway, it's a watermelon wheat and they didn't give me any technical specifications to discuss involving this beer except for it is so so tasty. Anything you would like about a wheat beer, which I know is relatively divisive. People either love them or hate them. Yeah. I like them. I, I generally don't care for a wheat beer. I'll drink one if it's if it's there. Drink a Blue Moon last time I was here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's got that kind of 
unfiltered wheat beer sensibility to it. And then it's got this like Jolly Rancher watermelon delicious. I've had the hardest time not chugging this beer. Yeah. Not chugging this beer has been more difficult than not swallowing zebra stripe gum. Because <laughs> it breaks apart. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And it just tastes like a, a sweet, scrumptious, lovely little piece of candy surprise. Oh, man. But That's, it's not. You it, just keep chewing it until it dies and dude, turns into overcooked meat. I have never had a fruit flavored beer before. And this stuff, dude, it had like I immediately noticed the watermelon. Like I, I almost wish you didn't tell me what it was, so you could have guessed. Yeah, yeah. So it it was it jumps out at you. It's so good, man. It's like it's almost like drinking a Jolly Rancher beer. It's yeah. not super sweet or anything. It just has that flavor. That it's watermelon just a, flavor. a very straightforward flavor. Yeah, it's good, man. This would be and it's awesome not over carbonated. No, it's, I like it's slightly it, carbonated. I like that it's not over carbonated. Yeah, you know, it's it it has that that true wheat beer profile. Without being like so fucking American, like this is a uh, soda pop with yeah. less sugar, you know? Let me just say, I think you guys hit the nail on the head here with this beer. Did you just use a correct phrase? I, I thought about it first before I you said You turned it. a really decent <laughs> phrase there, friend. <laughs> um, it's so good. I would, I would, if I could readily buy this in the store and call it my favorite beer, I would. Wow. I love it that much. It's that good. It really is. I'm impressed. I'm impressed as well. Yeah. Good uh, job, guys. Only negative thing I've got is that I've only got about two and a half ounces left. Oh, man. We should have had two of these. One for you and one for me. That's that's the way it should be. <laughs> if you guys are listening, take note of this. It's a good beer. It is a really good beer. So that's my good life hack <clears throat> for the day. What's the one you got out of your video? So, okay. It was, it was a gum life hack where they took, you know, the... Uh, the gum packets that are in the plastic trays with aluminum foil over the top of it yeah, yeah, popping yeah. out of there. Well, they got all the gum out and they just had the plastic tray and they put, put water in the plastic tray and froze it and made little tiny ice cubes. I was like, what in the world would you use those little tiny ice cubes for? They popped them in a little glass full of with Coke or something in it. I was like, that doesn't. That doesn't really make sense. It doesn't make but sense. But it is oddly entertaining. I mean, I would. I would do it just for it would be kind of cool to suck on a little piece of ice like that. Who doesn't like ice, you know, uh, but, you know, I could see like as a bartender, I like maybe doing that with like orange juice, making little little tiny orange juice cubes and then popping them in a shot of vodka to make like screwdriver shots. OK, I could see something like that. But here's the problem, though. Yeah, I get super annoyed when I'm drinking something and the ice melts down to what's really small and I go to take a drink and I have to kind of use my upper lip to stop the ice from getting sucked in with the rest of the liquid that I actually want. You know what I'm talking about? I yeah. know you've been there. Well, absolutely. I, I'm trying really hard to support this one. Uh, I guess because, just because I feel like disagreeing with you today. <laughs> Uh, I just, but really, I, I, I don't find it very useful. It was a dumb life hack, just like all the rest of them. Let me tell you the one good one, though. They're a good one. There is a good one. And this is something I didn't know about, actually. Uh, they had glasses life hacks. People were here glasses. Yeah. And one of them was if you kind of like make a little circle out of your fingers, you know, make tiny, tiny little dots and stick them up to your, your eyes. It'll ever so slightly clear up your vision to where you can see what you're doing. And it actually it actually does. It's not perfect by any stretch, but. I can actually, like, if I needed to see something off in the distance, like right now, with my glasses off, I can't see a damn thing. But as soon as I do that, I, I can it. actually, you, I can make, actually make uh, make out what I'm looking at. You I know, that was cool. What's I'd never funny that about before. that is, do you remember the show Family Matters? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that with show. With the Winslow family? Uh-huh. Uh, I remember an episode, I don't remember what was happening, but they were at Laura's basketball game. And mm -hmm. Steve Urkel uh, dropped his glasses or they got knocked off of him or something. And he was in the stands and he put his hands up to his eyes so he could focus like that on the oh, basketball so this game. A, this is a known thing then. Yeah. And I tried it when I was a kid and it worked. So yeah. I've actually known that since the 90s. Well, uh, I'm late to the party and I must say I'm shocked by that one. It was it was it was cool to to see that work. You know, I like to hit you with a good shocker. <laughs> it was. <laughs> you, you didn't this time they did <laughs> there was actually there was one more i want to say talk about this one today in fact this one it, it, this one was 
completely relevant to something that happened to me today. And I thought that was odd. I was cleaning out a cabinet and I knocked my face and knocked my glasses off my face. And I literally could not find them. I felt like Velma from Scooby-Doo trying to find her glasses. You know, you, I just could not find them. And then you were like, life hack, fuck glasses, lifelong bird box challenge. No. Oh, okay. Oh, never mind. Oh. Never mind. I still haven't seen that yet, but, but, uh, I had to call in Libby and tell her to, Hey, help me find my glasses, please. And don't step on them. Just like get on here and, and look for them. And she found it. She goes, Oh, they're right here. They're literally at my feet and I couldn't see them. You almost stepped on them. I would have stepped on them. So luckily she saved me, but I noticed on their life hack, they said, if you have your phone in your pocket, pull out your phone. And then, you know, I I'm, I'm uh, nearsighted so I can see kind of, I can see close put on your camera and just use your camera as your eyes. Did it work? I haven't tried it, but that, that would work. Absolutely. Because, because you can see it because I can see it. I yeah. thought the real life hack there was have kids to do your bidding for you. There you go. That's I actually what I it added is. That one. Yeah, that's actually what it is. <laughs> so I, I found the video. Okay. Oh, one more thing about this video. I know I'm going on and on about this video, but I was, I was completely blown away by this video. There was a, there was a life hack. The reason why it even got me to click on it, because the thumbnail image said something about why should you wear wet socks to bed? I was like, what? Who on earth would ever wear wet socks to bed? I got to know. So you can get hypothermia and then earn yourself a small vacation from work. Yeah, there you go. That's exactly it. Episode Honestly, over. <laughs> Honestly, I, I I was I was intrigued by the thumbnail and it worked on me. So I clicked on their damn video and gave them one of their 26 million views, by the way. And this. Whoa, this, you're one of the 26 million. One of the 26 million. This video was only posted in like uh, September of last or 2018. So 26 million. Uh, it worked on a lot of people. That's the crazy thing about this life hack bullshit is half of them are just hot garbage. Yeah. Yeah. Like, seriously. Just it's just they're just dumb, bait, man videos but i i feel so like defeated that i got you got sucked I in got sucked in and here's the worst part if about you were it. me you'd know better because i'm i'm a culture junkie we, I, so i avoid I do, this shit i do know better and i usually do but i was like i gotta know why yeah. do you wear wet socks i gotta bed? know about wet foot here's the worst part about it they never talk about it no, it was they just never the title. It. it was it was literally the thumbnail picture. That was it. They don't even address it in the video. So it was why wear wet socks to bed. Yeah. And then it was just uh, all it was was clickbait. It I just was all I it was. feel like there's legal grounds and potentially obligation to just sue them for, for false advertisement, man. That's what it was. Right. Like you should sue. You should you should. Seek collection of damages, pain <laughs> and time. suffering. That video was like 20 minutes long. You see, because time is money. Yeah. So in existential theory, they have stolen from you. They have. They not only time, but potential get that money. They stole your grind. Any lawyers out there, give no, me a call. They let's, knocked let's you off your happen. grind. Um, I don't know if you know, but I spent a semester in college studying entertainment <laughs> law. <laughs> Well, get us going, man. Let's yeah. let's, let's make this happen. Yeah, absolutely. I, so, I was so irritated about it. And now I'm getting them, giving them a free advertisement here by talking about them. But Every time we say on this episode, life hack, yeah. beep it out like it's a curse word. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> That'd take too long. Um, yeah, but life hacks, man, I'm a sucker for them. But also, Chupa Mikulo life hacks. Chupa me culo. Yeah, that's Spanish for suck my asshole. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 I said it like a white, white, white kid, too. And chupa me culo, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't catch that, but you totally did. Man, dude, let's let's talk about a few games because it's it's been it's been a little bit. And, I've been and we're already games. roughly halfway through the episode. I know. Dude, <laughs> Life Hacks just, just stole the show. Life Hacks now stole my time, too. <laughs> um, man, I did play a few games. Uh, actually, I played quite a few games. There, there was quite a few good sales going on. I got some gift cards and stuff for Christmas. I was able to pick up a few new games, uh, such as the Spyro Reignited trilogy. This is actually kind of my first intro to Spyro. I played Spyro the original way back in the day. I never played any of the sequels, and I think we've talked about it before. And it just didn't strike a chord with me for whatever reason. This time, this game is amazing, dude. It, it Yeah? It sucked me in, and it's 
held on to me pretty firm. Like I'm loving every minute about it. It's one of those games that it's like a collectathon. They want you to go find all the secret areas to get the the gems and you know the you want a hundred percent every level. And so that's been kind of my goal. And it's in like the classic platform style, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's an exact exact remake of the older game. Yeah, I I want to play that. It's so good, man. Because I, I think I think you and Malone would have a blast yeah, with this. Game. He he's really he loves the idea of Spyro. Yeah, uh, I have some of the original games, uh, and I've got a, a PS one and a PS two. The PS two kind of works. I don't know if the PS one works. because I don't have the cables for it. Yeah, I don't even know where I got it. I didn't have one when I was a kid. A P? A PlayStation? Well, I had a P. <laughs> <laughs> Just not the PlayStation that went with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't have a PS1 when I was a kid, and I don't know where I got this one. Somebody brought it over and... It appeared it. in my things. Yeah, well... Now as, a, as a PS1 does. <laughs> so I need a cable for it so I can see if it works and play my PlayStation 1 games on it. But he likes that Spyro Skylanders Academy show. Yeah. And every time we go to like a gaming store like Vintage Stock, he likes the Skylanders figures and he wants to play that. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Owen's really into that, too, right? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Dude. It, does that one still have the online support? Uh, I don't remember it ever having online support. Am I mixing that up with Infinity? Disney Infinity had some online stuff, I believe, but I don't remember Skylanders having any online oh. anything. Well, anyway. He's he's into the idea of Spyro. He's just not been given the opportunity to be into Spyro. You know, right, right. Spyro was kind of my jam. Yeah. You know, that's kind of how it was for my kids, too. And actually, I didn't. I bought this game for the kids for Christmas, but I think I've played it more than they have at this point. They enjoyed well, I it. I would imagine so, really. Oh, my gosh, dude. I'm loving it. And they, they love it, too. And this is their first intro to Spyro that isn't from. Skylanders, you know, they knew Spyro from Skylanders, just right. like Malone. But um, yeah, they Libby in particular is really enjoying the game. Uh, she's she's liking 100 percent of the levels just as much as me. Um, so we're we're kind of playing off the same play uh, s- save file, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're kind of working together through it and it's been fun. Uh, but if you actually if you're wanting to introduce it to Malone I'd say just skip the PS1 version altogether it's, just just get the just the get this new shit. one this, yeah. it looks so pretty man I, I mean I've seen videos and screenshots of it yeah and it does look fantastic it, it, it's really amazing how much they've cleaned this up I mean it's it's a new game you much. know it it makes me happy on a personal level yeah that Spyro managed to endure Oh, yeah. He became such an enduring character up there with the likes of characters like Mario or Link or uh, Mega Man. He's, he's held his own. I mean, he's he, I'd, I'd say he's in that upper like echelon mm-hmm. of video game mascots, mascots and uh, recognizability. Yeah. Re- recognition. Rec- would you would you say there's a difference in me using the word recognition versus recognizability? I would take it the same way and not think otherwise. All right. I'm thinking too much about that one, <laughs> but I, it's, I, if Spyro came out now for the first time yeah. at the age I'm at, I wouldn't assume that that character would last the way he has. Right. And, and that's how I felt about it when char- it came out. Yeah. To be a character that I was into when he came out mm-hmm. that has managed to endure the way he has, I actually thought that Crash would endure better than Spyro. Yeah. To be honest with you, when when Spyro and Crash, for that matter, came out, because I would consider those two kind of the same. Yeah, they're the same. The same level of, of and I feel mascot, like, you know, and they kind of are. And they're I not still, a super mascot like Mario, really, no, but but they're the same like recognizability. I think everybody right. who knows Crash would also know Spyro. Sure, yeah, same but generation. When when Spyro originally came out, I I kind of threw it into the hat with the other kind of throwaway mascots of the nineties. Like I didn't, it didn't do anything like for Gex. me like Gex or <clears throat> Perupa the Fupa. Well, I don't, I don't know if he's much of a mascot, like the three year platformer mascots. Oh, right on Croc. You remember Croc? Croc. Um, games like that, you know, yeah. like I, there was, th- there was a bunch of those games that you knew weren't going to have legs and you know, they were just going to die off with that game. And Spyro like, there was endured. probably a decent game, but it didn't, really take off yeah now okay well we're talking about we've got like the super mascots like Mega Man 
Mario, Link, mm-hmm. stuff like that. I would personally consider Sonic one of the super mascots. Yeah, definitely. Mega mascots. Yeah. And then just a step down, you've got like the Spyro and the Crash. Kind of in that realm, where do you think you'd put somewhere someone like Banjo Kazooie? I I would put him on the next level. I would put him on the same level as Spyro and Crash. Right. Okay. Yeah. I thought about that too. Whoops. Yeah, dude. Um <clears throat> it's a great game and I would highly recommend that you pick it up or anybody really. Um, I've also been playing Pokemon Let's Go Eevee with with Caroline. How is that? Dude, I love it. We had whenever the announcement first got made for that game, Eevee and Pikachu. Yeah. Your claim, and I'd find the episode, but I'm sure you probably won't try to debunk this. Your claim was that <laughs> you were going to get a second switch, maybe even a third, mm-hmm. and you were going to buy Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu. I did say that. You got a second switch. No. No? No. Did you get either of the games? I got one. I got Eevee. Okay, but not both? No. So in 2019, do you want to be more honest? <laughs> <laughs> Let's say I'm Sorry, I'm sorry. That wasn't that wasn't that wasn't where I was going with it. That just came out of me. Um I've read You're attacking me and I don't like it right now. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm attacking the shit out of you. <laughs> I've I've read that Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu were disappointing. They're not. And to address your your um, claim there, sir. <laughs> You're not going to glaze over it with me. <laughs> I went too far. So that was my intention and I wanted to do it. But, you know, life happens and you can't afford to buy another switch and another whole game. Dude, <laughs> don't I know it? Yeah. How often do I buy even a new game? Yeah, right. Literally never. It's, I've been sitting on the same money that I put to the, put aside for decidedly Super Smash Brothers. This is the same money. November. That, yes, this is the same money that we talked about in November. In, in December, in like December, on the podcast. Yeah, but yeah, in November. I, too. I set it to the side. It is still sitting in a paperclip in my bedside table. <laughs> Seventy dollars that I put to the side to go buy Smash, and I haven't. You know, I went to GameStop last week. And had a copy of Smash in my hand. And you didn't do it? And went to buy it. And it occurred to me that I would use my card instead of the cash I had sitting in my bedside table. Yeah. And thought, now I'll just come back with the cash and buy it. And because I know if I spend it out of the account, I won't go put that cash back in the bank. You're right. You know? Right. And so I was like, I'll just go home and grab my cash and then come back and do this. And did not like an asshole. You still need to, man. You still need yeah, to. So in 2019, I intend to be more honest as well. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like I would like to go back and listen to some of the past episodes and some of the claims that I made and you as well and see if those ever came to fruition. Oh, yeah. man, I would put $70 <laughs> on my claims not coming to fruition. <laughs> Some that immediately come to mind are how many times I say, I'm going to get on Twitch and stream me playing this game, and then I don't fucking do it, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Dude, it's it's tough, man. It's tough to make time to, to do stuff like that, as much as I would love to. Oh, man. Kids, family, work, life happens. Well, and, I mean, Fat Big's at an age where if he comes in the room and I'm playing something, I'm no longer playing something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. My playtime is over once he walks in the room and realizes I'm playing. Dude, it's a battle for the TV in this house sometimes. Luckily, Tilly's at the age where she wants to play. Yeah. So if I hand her the turned off controller and tell her, all right, you're playing now, and I keep playing, she thinks she's playing. Yeah. She's going to hear this one day <laughs> and like. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, maybe. If the internet still exists. <laughs> Here's the cool thing about gaming with your your kids though I, I discovered this yesterday so you remember when i was talking about Fortnite, how we were all playing on different systems together yeah well the same can be said for minecraft i was playing minecraft uh well libby was asking me to play minecraft with her and i was like yeah sure i'll play some minecraft with you i was playing on the xbox one she was on the pc katie was wanted to play and she was playing on her kindle little tablet holy shit all of us in the same room playing minecraft together and it worked flawlessly man no lag or anything you went from minecraft to ours craft exactly <laughs> <laughs> if we still did silly episode titles that'd be the one ours craft yeah all right all right i still do them i just don't make them prominent anymore no 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 they're what in the description 
I haven't gone back and checked out what the titles are in a long time. I need to go see what we've got. I think Digimon Girls Next Door was our best episode title ever. Dude, I can't breathe. You gonna be all right? Oh, there it is. You've been listening to Just a Bit Gaming. I'm your only host, Ryan Chumpy Crash Reynolds. <laughs> don't take a br- don't take a drink in the middle of laughing. Oh my gosh. I don't. I inhaled that water, man. I was a theater student. I paused for laughter. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, what were we even talking about? A lot of shit. Oh, Evie. Evie is a great game. Uh, <laughs> Evie is a great game. I remember now. <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> Evie. Oh, that was a really good rewind noise. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's. I don't. I. Before the game came out, a lot of people were discouraged because you have to use your Pokeball or you have to throw a Pokeball to catch Pokemon and you don't weaken them anymore. It's more like Pokemon Go on your phone. I actually prefer that method, man. It works so well. And it's like most of the time when I'm battling Pokemon anyway, I don't want to weaken them. I just want to catch them. So if you just eliminate the part where you battle them and just try to catch them, that's cool. You still battle with other trainers and there's plenty of other trainers to battle. So I don't feel like it takes anything away. and It just makes it better. It makes it yeah. faster. Uh, it's a really, really pretty game. Like It's one of the best looking Pokemon games that I've ever seen. I, <clears throat> I do want to play it. Uh, he, I mean, you know, since like October or November, how little time I've had to play oh, yeah. anything. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I don't even remember the last time I plugged my Switch in to charge it up. Oh, man, dude. I, pl- I use mine almost daily. Uh, Almost daily. I love that. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. But the other thing is like, the, I want to play, I want to play Eevee or Pikachu. It's, it's very faithful to red and blue and yellow. Are the two games like if, okay, you and I are sitting in the same room. Right. We both got our switch out and we want to play Pokemon. Right. You've got Eevee. I've got Pikachu. Mm-hmm. Are those compatible? Yeah. Yeah. To, yeah. To play with one another. Yeah. Like they have some co-op stuff. It's not the greatest. Um, well, it's Nintendo. Right. Uh, but, there are exclusive Pokemon to each version. Yeah. Just like they were back in the day. So okay. the benefit there would be you would get some to trade with me and, you know, that you couldn't catch in your game. So that's kind of the cool thing about it. <clears throat> but honestly, it's if you have any sort of nostalgia at all towards the original Pokemon games, this is this is one you should play. Uh, it's even if you just if you like Pokemon Go on your phone, I think it's a good game to play. Are those two games stripped back down to the original lineup of Pokemon, or is it all the new yes, shit? It's only the original 151, if you count Mew, right? Uh, Pokemon, and uh, it works well. I love it. It's <clears throat> excuse me. Another weird thing about it is that you only use one Joy-Con to play it, unless you're in handheld mode where you can use both. If you're playing on the TV, you just one use one handheld. Huh? You use the joystick to move your character. And then you have to push like A or B to uh, you push A to accept like menu items and stuff or pick up item on the uh, Pokeball randomly on the ground or whatever that you find. And then B is cancel. And that's all you need. And then if you go back and think about it, you don't need anything else in those. So games. really, it is just a very beautiful mobile game. Mm, what, I guess. Sure. What, what's the what's the play angle? Are you like third person, top down, top down? Just like the old school. So it's it's a very Pokemon. beautiful dungeon crawler. Kind of. Yeah, I guess you could. I guess you could say. Oh, another cool thing. The Pokemon, whenever you remember in the old games, you have to run through the gig grass and encounter random Pokemon and hope that you catch what you want. The Pokemon, you can see them now in the grass and you can run into the ones that you want to battle or try to catch. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So if you're looking for one specific type of Pokemon, you can just run past all the other ones until the one that you're looking for pops up and then battle that one. I love that. We've talked about this on the show before. I've said it before. I will say it again. We both know. Yeah. I just want them to take Pokemon and make a big open sandbox Skyrim type world out of it. There's an image that came out last week, I think, showing what it might look like if they made Pokemon into an open world game. And how incredible it would be. It was cool. It would be so cool. cool. It doesn't have to be realistic, you know. Like, you take, like, the the Breath of the Wild animation style and 
It kind of looked like scale that. of that world, you yeah. know. But turn it into a Pokemon game. Yeah. Where you, you know, you you start and you get your starter Pokemon and you jump out on the road and you've got to catch them and defeat them and there's danger and opponents and all that. But in this big massive scale, and you can kind of choose your own and you know take take, I guess ideologies from like, you know, fable. Or dishonored shit games like that where you can be a good guy or a bad guy and it like makes a difference in the world you're in, Mm -hmm. you know, I think it'd be so cool. It it would be cool. You could fall in with a gang like uh, Team Rocket or you could battle them instead, you know, Monster Hunter kind of goes that route a little bit. Right. But it's not Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't give a shit. (laughs) (laughs) I, I think I think you could be right. I mean, but I. Nintendo will never they will never do that they're gonna stick to their, to their tried and true formula. I know it's formulaic but I think it would be I think it would be successful I think it's worth a shot I and mean, then whenever they do it and admit to the world that they did it because they heard our podcast and they pay me royalties on my intellectual property I think that would be cool too I would like to support you on that, but uh, I don't think I don't think it's your intellectual property at that point. It's not unless you create a whole new set of Pokemon that are your own, and they're not called Pokemon. No, it's it's just ten thousand years in the future, and they run the world, yeah. and have become they've built their own sentient functioning civilizations. Yeah, and they're navigating the woes of college. And surviving on ramen, and they are now Brokemon. Dude, you just recalled my my college first year of college. Yeah. Oh yeah, I lived on ramen and peanut butter sandwiches, and dressed like an electric mouse. <laughs> <laughs> I could have. You could have. I could have. It would have been. It would have been charming. At, at most, <laughs> it would be electrifying. Oh, dude. Um, I picked up a PlayStation Classic finally. Yeah. With my gift cards that I got for Christmas. You didn't um, put those in your bedside table and no. <laughs> keep making promises to yourself. The day after Christmas, they lowered the price of those things to 60 bucks. And I remember I was talking to you. On yeah, the phone, actually, I, when I, I got called it. you. Well, because Malone wanted to talk to Owen. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Ryan gave me a call when I was in the parking lot of GameStop. And uh, yeah, so I passed the phone off to Owen so he could talk to Malone. I went in there and picked up my my. Uh, PlayStation Classic. And let me say, I was highly discouraged by what was set, being said about the PlayStation Classic. You know, I did a full episode talking about why, you know, I was disappointed in what they were doing. But, but, I think I was more disappointed in the price point than anything. Like, I did want this thing. But 100 bucks is pretty steep for what it is. It, yeah. Yeah. So dropping it down to 60, I think 60 is a good, sweet price point. A lot of people say, oh, wait for it to get cheaper. I think this is a good price point for what you're getting. The console itself is so pretty. It's like super faithful to the original console. Where is it? Uh, it's in the living room. I have it hooked up on the TV in there. Ah. And the little controllers that come with it, they're not little. They're full-size controllers, but it plugs in USB, and it's got the little uh, plastic gray uh, it looks like what it looked like when you plugged it into the console. Right. <clears throat> Everything about it is just super well made. It's boxed really well. The box is pretty cool. It's it's, bo- it's weird because it's boxed in like three different boxes. I felt like I had to dig through a lot to just to get to it. Uh, but plugging it in is super simple and it was nostalgic because it had the same old menu system from the original PlayStation. Uh, the game lineup, while I don't like a lot of the games on there... I love a lot of the games on there, so I'm okay with that. And it was cool. Uh, I will make a point to the the big complaint that these are the PAL versions, and it even says PlayStation of Europe. Sorry, I'm spitting all over you. <clears throat> it even says PlayStation of Europe when you load the game, which is weird in the title screen. Um, but I did notice the frame rate drop. And it's pretty significant. Like, I thought I could look past it, um, but I was playing Resident Evil Director's Cut, and it's very noticeable. Like, I, I've played that game many times, right? and I know what it's supposed to look like, and I know how it's supposed to move move, and how fluid everything's supposed to be. But when I played that PAL version, it's slower. Like, if <clears throat> that frame skipping is very 
noticeable. And it just, it kind of took away from it for me a little bit. Now, not all the games are the PAL versions, but a lot of them are. And that was one of them. And uh, so I played, I played some other games and it wasn't so bad. Like Intelligent Cube was good. Uh, most of the other games were, were really good, but, and, and it didn't really, it didn't stop me from playing it. I did get a good ways through the game. Uh, because I know how I know it so well. I know the layout of the map and everything. Right. And, um, but it was it was a little bit disappointing. It's like, why did they decide to do this? Like everybody who's played these games know what they're supposed to look like. And then you throw a lower frame rate PAL version in there. It didn't make sense. Uh, but all that being said, you could still hack this thing and you can still put whatever you want on there. And it's so easy to do. And it's even going to be made more easy with. The, the next update that's coming to Bleemsync. Bleemsync is what you use to load the games that you have or that you want onto your your PlayStation. And uh, before they didn't have like a client that you could install and use on your PlayStation. It was more renaming folders on a flash drive, on a USB flash drive, and putting the games in there in a certain way. And it's, it's a little bit of a process to do it, but it works really well. So what you do is you put your games... Uh, on this flash drive and you plug it into the second control port and uh, <clears throat> boot up the system and it doesn't work every time I've noticed but it does work if you're a little bit persistent with it you can make it work it almost reminds me of getting a game to work on the NES where you take it out and you blow the cartridge you stick it back in and you try it again yeah. maybe it'll work it's kind of that but it's it didn't work so I yeah, unplug it quick side note here uh, at work we use these handheld tablets to take orders and process payments and all that. Yeah. And one of them wasn't charging the other day and I pulled it off the charging dock and I blew in its bottom. <laughs> and that worked. And everybody was like, Oh, way to go. NES. What's up? 1990. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that hasn't worked since you were a kid. Hey, baby, baby, because I got fucking smart ass 17 year old standing behind me. Yeah. And you know what happened? Oh yeah. It worked. It worked. You know why? Because everyone takes a charge when you blow in their bottom. <laughs> <laughs> stuff gets stuck in the port. That, or yeah. That, I mean, I like that. But yeah. Stuff does get stuck in the port. You know, you have to blow that stuff out and make it work again. Get that proper connection. Yeah. That's the way to establish a proper connection is to blow in the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I can't disagree. I'm a walking know. dating site right now. <laughs> so, yeah, to get it to work, I mean... You have to, I would have to unplug the system and I would remove the USB, plug it back in, plug it back in and then start again. And then it would work. Like it, I would say sometimes it would work on the first time. Sometimes it would work on the third time. It just is up in the air and that's supposed to all get improved as well, but you're not modifying the console itself. All you're doing is having the console read the flash drive. So you're not, you're not in essence kind of like hacking the console. Um, it already has this. Do you capability. think they made it that way on purpose? I don't know, man. I was thinking about that. I was like, that it's it's too easy, you know. Somebody did have to go in and figure out how to get the file structure to work for the PlayStation to be able to do that. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, they had to have known that people are going to want to put their own games on there, and they would. So maybe they did. I don't know, you know. Um, yeah. But anyways, I was able to load several games onto my flash drive and play them, and dude, they work. It works great. Like it's a great little emulation gate system and if you have the means and access to be able to put custom games on there the games that you want to play it's great it's great for that um so i would highly recommend uh if you're on the fence on it at, at all like i was just go ahead and do it this it's a good little built system it's sony didn't do the greatest job with what they created but the fact that you can customize it yourself is really it's good enough for me. What did one illegally downloaded game say to the other? I don't know what. Emulator. <laughs> that was bad. That was bad. <laughs> mm. I wasn't even going to let you have that one. I wasn't listening to most of what you just said. I was waiting for my opportunity to say that. <laughs> You know what's funny is like that's like he's you 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 played it off like you were totally paying attention. I saw I saw you in saw your the eyes wheels that you were listening and I was like, Oh, he's he's, he's listening to me. You right know, now. I was actually listening to you. <laughs> right. <laughs> On the talk of Resident Evil, dude, did you play the Resident Evil 2 remake demo that just came out the other day? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
This is the same demo. I'm not going to go into depth about it because this is the same demo that I played at E3 and I talked about it on the E3 episode. Yeah. Um, I am even more excited than I already was. And this game is still proving to me now why it was my game of the show at E3. It's it still blew me away. This demo blew me away again. He was still talking about it when we went to Retropalooza together. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to retcon that I didn't go. <laughs> Yes, yeah, I guess. <laughs> but I mean, it's, so the demo is only 30 minutes long and it's you play as Leon in the police station and you just kind of play until the demo. You can either beat the demo or your time limit runs up. I let Amy play because once your 30 minute time limit limit is up, you can't play it again. So I let Amy play on her name just so. I was like, I've, I've already been talking to her extensively about this demo and how much I loved it at E3, and I wanted to see if it had the same effect on her. And dude, she it did. It, she was blown away by how the zombies reacted and everything and how realistic everything felt. Like, the sound effects, the music, the, the graphics, like, how the zombies are responsive to getting hit. Like, you shoot their freaking arms off, man. It's so detailed. Uh, <clears throat> it, and... Everything about it is just this is like the ultimate zombie game. I've never played a zombie game as as kind of like realistic as this. Um, and having them react to your gunshots is, is really incredible. But she couldn't get through the demo because or through her time because it was too scary for her. And I thought that was hilarious. It's like I, I that's that's a good quality. You know, I'm going to try to play it then. I, I want to see. I want to see if you if you the person who doesn't get scared by video games I want to see if it has an effect on you i really do i'm curious but the uh, and it's only 30 minutes so just know that if you're going to play this thing you don't have to play it longer than 30 minutes to to get your effect from it yeah <clears throat> uh but it's a great demo i am more pumped i think i'm going to get like the deluxe edition of the game now this is i'm i haven't been this excited about a game in a long time um, and I've been excited about it since since its announcement at E3. And I'm, I'm impressed that the demo is still as impressive to me as it was, you know, six months ago or however when, right. when I played it. <clears throat> I think this game is going to be really successful for Capcom. It's going to it's going to put Resident Evil back on the map. And it makes me excited for the potential of seeing other remakes of old Resident Evil games. I know they already did a remake of the original Resident Evil, but I would love to see them remake it again in this style because the original Resident Evil holds a place in my heart specifically for how impactful it was to me at that time. And I would love to see the the Spencer Mansion reimagined in today's graphics and gameplay and those zombies and everything done in this style. I would love to see that. And I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility, especially if this game does well. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I, I definitely recommend everybody go play it. I don't want to talk about too much because when the game comes out, I am probably going to power through it and do a whole and show. Talk about to it. nothing yeah. but that for oh a few gosh. episodes. Yes, I will. I will for sure. But I understand you've played a little bit of resident resident residential red dead redemption 2 oh yeah mhm mhm uh huh yeah, tell me yeah, about it uh-huh, tell me about it uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh i started red dead i got red dead that that's the first news. that's that's I, impressive I, enough. I got a new and current game <laughs> <laughs> That's actually mine, and I could start at the, the same time everybody else. Was you got a it. new game within a month of its release. Yeah, That's impressive. Yeah, man. the last game I got within a month of its release was Breath of the Wild. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. I, I thought you got that well after that game came out. Uh-uh. Look at you. I Look at me, dude. That was, what, three years ago, though? Now, three I've years? played other games mm -hmm. within, like, uh, Wolfenstein 2. Because you had oh, other yeah, things you were right, playing, so right. you lent that to me. So I played it within the first month. So really, I I play about a game a year within its first month of release. Uh, Red Dead is so good. For all the times you and I talked about how I wouldn't like it and how it wasn't the game for me, I was like, I mean, I, I was so in love with the first Red Dead. Yeah, it is. I, I put that in my top five or ten all time games. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So my in-laws got me red dead 2 for christmas and uh i started it 
and put some time in yeah. and promptly put it away. <laughs> you Be- saw how much of a time sink it Because was. if I go any further, that's all I'm going to fucking do. Yeah. Yep. So I had to stop. I had to stop completely. Also, I tried to play with Fat Big and, and Tilly, Fat Big and the bird in the room with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, she didn't give a shit. She was coloring. <laughs> 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 but you know fat big <laughs> I got a good mental image of that that's all right you know you know fat big gives a fat big shit about video games yeah. so he's playing but every time I shot someone he'd be like he's just asleep right <laughs> you didn't make him did you make him dead did you make him dead will you make him dead hey make that bear dead hey can you make that horse dead red dead Right. Red dead. And so I'm like, every time I'd shoot somebody and they'd hit the ground and I'd pickpocket them, he'd be like, are they dead? Because you took their stuff. And I'd be like, no, no, no. They're sleeping. You're training a serial killer, man. No, he's just real concerned about it. Oh, I see. He's real concerned about it. Like when you're in the snow and you're supposed to avoid the bear. Yeah. I got too close and it rushed me. And so he's like, kill that fucking bear, bro. (laughs) And so then I had a guy who I tried to lock onto to talk and I hit the wrong button yep. and I shot him in the head. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And he's like, is he dead? Cause you took his stuff. And I'm like, uh, no, he's asleep yeah. and I'm holding onto his stuff. So nobody else steals from him. Good point. You know, you're a good guy. So instead of like, yeah, I shot him on accident and now I'm taking his only earthly possessions, Yeah, you know? So I can't play it with Malone because he's too concerned about the mortality rate of it. Uh, and then you know, I'm still studying, trying to get that home inspection license and working. I have to be up at six in the morning to work it. So right now I don't have the time to plug into it. So, you know? so but you're making I, a good point though. What I have played is incredible and I love it. And it is one of the most absolutely beautiful and detailed video game environments I've ever been in. Mm-hmm. And I, I have to hide it from myself for right now because of the time sink that I know it will be. Yeah. You, you make a good point and this is a valid point. And as to why I kind of stopped playing it, I know that it needs more time than I can give it. Yeah. I know it. You can't just, you can't just turn this game on and play for 30 minutes to an hour and call it done. You have to, you have to be kind of married to it. To a point. Yeah, you know? dude. I mean, you when you turn this game on, know that you're going to be doing something for a while because what happens is you if you want to take on a quest or whatever, <clears throat> before you can even do this quest, you got to travel to the location and there is no fast travel in this game. You have to actually go there and it takes time to do that. So a lot of this game is spent traveling and a lot of it is spent you know, doing mundane tasks before you get to do the thing that you were actually supposed to do. Right. And being, here's being rockstar red dead, the first red dead, even if you had like a low powered horse or a low level horse, it was still pretty much akin to driving a motorcycle. You could really zip around on that booger. And in this game, you start out and I'm mashing a, and my horse is like, uh, uh, fucking don't. Yeah. No, yeah. that, that hurts my horsey ankles. It, the, I ended up just pushing the thing off a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> the problem I have. Okay. Is that I respect the fact that they want to make this as kind of like authentic as possible. And they really want you to be completely engrossed and enveloped in this. It's world. less of a cowboy game and more of a cowboy simulator. Yes. You're right. It is a simulation game. Yes. And the thing is, if you don't have time to devote to being playing a simulator and being really kind of in this world, then it's not going to it's not going to work for you. And I feel like that's where it's hitting me is like, I don't I don't have the amount of time and attention span to give the game what it requires of me to really appreciate. Yeah. And I, I can appreciate the fact that they are making this kind of simulation game. And it applies to a different audience. Um, well, it's the people that are following a life path to be a cowboy. Oh, you is know? that what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. It's it's really uh, more of a um, a training module type of thing, okay. you know? Yeah. Well, they they've really done a good job. They, then, uh, yeah, they they did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I if this game had come out when I was a 
kid when I was young. And you had nothing better to do. And I had plenty of time. I, I I would be all over this game. But as it stands, you know, I I have a hard time managing my time as it is anyway. I can't I can't sit down and say okay i've got three hours let's spend three hours with red dead i j- that just doesn't happen in my life i totally agree and uh you know uh, most of the other games that i play i will play in a one hour span yeah and that's about it like spider-man like spider-man yeah the, which malone and i are still playing spider-man is great for for turning on and playing for a certain set amount of time and then being done. We've talked before about how monumental it is that I even have played as much of that game as I have, Mm -hmm. that I've stayed this plugged into it. Malone and I are currently 98% through our completion run. That's incredible, man. Not only did I finish the story mode and stay interested and I'm still playing it months later, we are almost finished with our completion. Yeah. I don't know if I have ever in modern gaming done a completion run on anything that's to speak to how fucking good spider-man is it is an incredible game it really i mean we talked about it on our game of the year show but it absolutely is the game of the year for me and and for you as well absolutely hands down yeah that's that's pretty cool what i'm impressed with though 98 percent means that you got some gold medals on those uh what is the guy's name? Taskmaster. Taskmaster and challenges. shit. Oh my yeah, gosh. we've got some gold medals. I think there's only two or three challenges that we don't have gold medals on. That's incredible to me. What is your favorite like challenge that he poses? I l- start with your favorite and then your least favorite. Okay. Malone really loves the straight out combat challenges. Mm-hmm. He loves those. I was a fan of the stealth challenges. Yeah. Um. Though there were there were stealth challenges with Taskmaster, right? Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, the little ninja face. Yeah, you have to take out all the guards yeah. within a set amount of time. I liked the stealth challenges. He liked the straight out combat challenges. Uh, but by the end, I still I hate the drone challenges. Drone challenges suck. I hate them. Uh, just because you have to you have to play it several times to get the score that you need to get, yeah. and it just becomes a bit rote. What you know? I don't like. Is it the drone one where you have to go through the rings? Like where you're following it and it gets the big blue bubble and yeah. you gotta boom through yeah. it, you know? I hate those yeah. so much. Yeah, I figured out the secret <clears throat> to them though. What's that? Don't swing. Just do the Do the zips. Zip and okay. then hop off of things. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just that do makes the sense. Zips. I, I that, didn't do that. That does it. That that gets you your score on those. It doesn't make it any more fun though. The bomb challenges, once we kind of figured out Yeah how to up the the secret to the getting a gold on the bomb challenge is don't just hit it once with the webs when you throw it hit it as many times as possible oh because every web that you hit it with gives you more points for muffling the sound of the bomb weird if you hit it with one it just keeps it from blowing up the city but if you hit it with multiples you get score yeah yeah you get a higher score because then the citizens aren't made aware of it i okay that makes sense i had a hard time with getting anything above bronze on those and i would i would get really good time and blow everything up and i'm like why the hell can i get not get gold you gotta muffle them well you just you just informed me man now i have to go back and do it's it. because i'm a gaming expert <laughs> <laughs> that's that's actually pretty cool i'm glad to hear that the other ones that i had a hard time with were the stealth ones the stealth ones it took me a while to figure out how to get gold on those oh man i i i could kill the stealth ones yeah and i'm not a stealth gamer but something about those stealth missions, I really bit off on. Because they're hardly stealth. Well, okay. Well, I mean, in in that game, I would hardly call them stealth. The, what they are are one-hit combo takedowns. How many guards can you take down in rapid succession? But you have to do it without them noticing. That's stealth. It's still stealth, but it's easy to not get noticed. Like, not not if you're doing trying to get a gold because you have to do it fast. Yeah. And you get extra points for how you attack them. Yeah, you do. And that's a that's a you have to point. vary I mean, your attacks you and vary your weapons thing every time. and you have to do it fast. And you have to do combos. Like yeah. the combos to me was what got me in the gold medal for It's not even that I'm that into the stealth aspect. I'm making a case for how impressive I am, so I need you to let me have this win. You got it. <laughs> hey, thanks a heap. Starting twenty nineteen on a high note. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty incredible. But uh I would have to agree with you. The bubble ones suck. The combat ones, I'm not even really a big fan of. Yeah, I think we're like two. We're like a side mission and 
like a couple of like thug crimes away from getting the final suit. So those thug crimes, they were fun whenever I was going from one point A to point B and stopping in between to do those. But now that well, I you have to search them out when you have to search them out, it sucks. It's kind of a bummer. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But we're I mean, we're so close <laughs> now that I just can't stop. You can't. Can't stop. Won't stop. Did you get the uh, did you get the Peter Parker in the underwear suit? yet? That's the suit that we're working on. You okay. have to have all districts completed. Oh, OK. OK. And so we are like, like I said, we're like two or three thug crimes. Did you get the um, Sam Raimi costume? Yeah, yeah, that was that was just a gift. Right. Yeah, you didn't have to earn that. Malone right. loved that one. I wanted to go back to that came out after I hadn't I haven't touched Spider Man uh, since I beat it. It's one of the best <laughs> looking ones in game. Like it looks when you're cool. playing, yeah. it looks really, I'm really good. I'm a fan fantastic. of that costume in general though, so yeah. Uh, when you're I mean, playing, it looks really good. What I'm waiting for, I know they have the Black Widow DLC. I'm waiting for them to release a good chunk of DLC for me to before I come back. They're done with DLC. Really? They released the city that never sleeps. Is that it? That sounds right. They had the uh, black cat the, one. The black. I said black widow. Before. Black cat. I meant black cat. Uh, and then they released one other that I, I thought they were coming out with three. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They've already released three. Mm, okay. they, they've released all the DLC they're going to release for this game. They've made the announcement. They released all that DLC and then they released the Raimi suit and said, we are done with this game. Let us work on the sequel. Okay. Well, then I guess I need to go pick up the DLC. This I love it so much. I I don't buy DLC generally, and uh, I think I will for this one. Right. Once we finish our completion run, I got to give it back to my brother. <laughs> and honestly, I'll probably buy it once once we've finished our completion run. I'll probably buy it and buy the DLC a piece at a time yeah. and let him alone play those because he's genuinely good at the game, too. Is he? Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm impressed that he's still playing it. I think Owen... Owen Liu's lost interest in the game pretty quick, and I think it's because of the controls. The controls are not super intuitive, um, especially the combat. The combat is a lot of uh, reactionary button right. presses. He doesn't really have those skills, so <clears throat> he uh, he gets he he can hold his own pretty well. But you put him up against a good swarm of enemies, especially towards the end of the game, he won't stand a chance. So uh, I think he lost interest after that. That makes sense. I saw a picture on Twitter. Uh, it was the cover, and it's done in a similar way to the Spider-Man, but it had Iron Man. On I it. saw the same thing. Oh my gosh, dude! Did it, that not make you so want that cool. game? It would be cool. It would be really. It cool. It would be really cool. Uh, or it would really suck. One of the two. There would be yeah. no middle ground with it. The only thing that I think would not work out for doing something like that is the fact that Iron Man can fly. He can go from point A to point B very quickly. And that map, while it was big, I don't think it was big enough for a character of flight. Right. So. So I don't know. It, it, it might would be cool. It might would not. Ah, that, I is. don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe if you did like uh, like an, a full on Infinity War game. Like yeah. with a no man's sky type universe. It makes me it makes me excited to see more triple A quality superhero games. That's all I want out of this. Yeah, pretty much. Well, um, Ryan, where can they find us? I think we're good. www.jabgcast.com. And where else? Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all those places. Damn. Da, 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 damn. <laughs> We're also on YouTube for all you audio listeners. Oh, YouTube. Yes. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. All the video portions of the podcast are posted there. Um, I appreciate everybody listening. It's been a great year and a half of the show, and uh, I'm not slowing down. Uh, me neither. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. We will see you next time. Big episode 40. Oh, episode 40? Next time. Oh, it's yeah. a big one. Yeah. All right. See you guys. See you later, Crocodile.